Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Mess. So today we're going to continue the series Model Museum, where we review every single Sega Model 1, 2, and 3 arcade game in a retrospective fashion. That's not an arcade racing game, because I did that last year. If you can't tell already, we're playing Virtual On or Torio Tangram, which I will just refer to Virtual On from this point forward, because that is a mouthful. This is a Model 3 game that was ported over to the Dreamcast, and it is an absolutely spectacular game, both visually as well as gameplay-wise. I absolutely love it. Before we get to far in love though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe and ring that notification bell, definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. Now fair warning about something like Virtual On, there are two different versions of this game even though it's the same game. The version in which you play with a twin stick setup and the version in which you don't. That is to say, you absolutely have to have some sort of twin stick setup to make this game playable to the point where it's going to be enjoyable. If you try to play this on a regular Dreamcast controller on the console version, or if you set up Supermodel without that twin stick, it is not going to be anywhere near as fun. So take it from me, figure out the twin stick setup, you're going to appreciate it. And I will say too, at least against the CPU, this game can be extremely difficult even on normal difficulties, but as a two-player game it gets even more fun. It is just a 3D mech action battle game that plays sort of similarly to a fighting game. Obviously it's in full 3D, but it has that sort of fighting game charm to it because it is a one versus one situation. You basically have different movesets and different skills and different mechs to choose from. You can do aerial combat, you can do melee combat on the ground, you can pivot left and right and move your mech in so many different directions. But keeping track of your opponent, locking onto them and getting those hits is where all the skill and fun in this game comes from. It is as easy to lose as it is to win and you really need to keep on top of absolutely everything you're doing when you're playing the game or else you're going to continue to see the game over screen. You will see here I basically got a little too far away from my opponent, let them get that lock on into me and I was lost there. It just didn't work. But depending on what character you're playing against, there's different mechs with different movesets and different weapons and they are going to be more or less advantageous for a playstyle. You'll see here I was able to stack my opponent but I just missed that melee attack but when you actually do land it it takes like a half of their health bar off it's risk versus reward in this game if you miss a melee attack you open yourself up to get absolutely hammered on if you hit a melee attack you can basically destroy your opponent in one to two shots like I just did there that is what you need to decide when you're playing virtual on how much risk do you want to take and how much reward are you looking for if you got a full life bar that risk might be worth it if you're down to the last quarter you really want to start playing conservatively and making sure you preserve your health so you don't end up dead but that's what makes the game so intriguing it really does require a lot of strategy and it is a lot of fun when you finally figure out the character you like for your individual opponent and go with it but of course, this isn't just a retrospective about the gameplay, it's also a retrospective about the hardware. And Virtual On on the Supermodel emulator I think is one of the best looking games on the Sega Model 3. Now of course like any Sega game, they definitely amplify the colors up. Everything is bright and vibrant and that does such a good job of letting this game age gracefully. All of the textures are smooth, all of the mechs have a ton of polygons in them. This game looks like something that could have come out in the Xbox 360 generation and almost to the Xbox One or PlayStation 4 generation. It just does look that good, but leave me a comment down below and tell me what you think of this style. Of course some of the geometry is a little bit more simple than we are used to, but otherwise this is an absolutely beautiful game that I love seeing in most. Ocean. But you'll see here after we took that loss we're going to move over to a different character and your character selection is going to be so important. You're going to see those percentage bars at the bottom of the screen and that is basically your charge gauge of how much you have on each individual attack. You need to be smart about it and some opponents just move so quickly or you move a little bit slower. You do need to come up with that strategy. If you can get that one big hit in it's going to change the tide of the match. But if you whiff it you're going to put yourself at such a disadvantage at the beginning there. You'll see I got that melee attack in, I was able to stagger my opponent, and that makes a huge difference. But you can block, you can avoid attacks, you do need to wait for those openings, and that's why it is so close to a fighting game in its overall feel. There's strategy, and you need to decide when you want to really rush them and attack them versus when you need to step back. I had an opening there for melee attack, I landed it, and it won me the match. But the soundtrack, also straight fire. Go ahead and listen for 45 seconds, and I'll be right back. Get ready.
just another classic Sega soundtrack with classic Sega sound effects, and I will say that the audio balance in this is quite good. A lot of times Sega seemed to like to put the sound effects, especially in engine noises for arcade racers, to be louder than the actual soundtrack, but Virtual On here has a really good balance. And this is probably my favorite entry in this series as well, but there are games after this, some of which are mech action battle games, and some actually have a visual novel sort of flair to them, that one I've never played though. But this is a classic Sega franchise, but it's not up there with the Daytonas or the House of the Deads as far as recognition is concerned. These were awesome arcade games, they're awesome home games as well, but for some reason Virtual On never seemed to get the same attention that a lot of Sega's other franchises did, and that to me is a bummer. But as we move on to different matches here, you will see how quickly you can defeat an opponent if you get them on the ropes. Matches can last 10 to 15 seconds and you can win or lose in that time frame. Matches can last for over a minute just depending on how you kind of pick and move. You move in, you move out, and you avoid your enemy attacks. And we go from Earth to space and we have a quasi boss battle with whatever the hell this thing is here. Looks like a mech crab or so. It's a very strange battle. It opens up and they're immediately unloading on you with all of these different attacks. You have to rush in, you have to start attacking, or else you're never going to get past this. It's a really interesting roadblock that just doesn't make the most sense to me as to why they would have done this. Because you will see here, I take that first loss. They were able to block every single attack. But you can also cheese this, and I intentionally lost the first battle, believe it or not, leave me a comment down below. If you move left and right once you get into the boss's face, you basically become invincible. They don't have an attack that seems to be able to hit you. You'll see here I get underneath that machine gun, I move left and right, and then the boss doesn't do anything whatsoever except sit there and basically let you unload on them. So it's one of those things, if you get stuck at this boss, just get in their face, move left and right, make sure you're strafing and attacking with melee, and 10 out of 10 times you're going to see the next part of the game. No issues whatsoever. It is fun when you go to Earth and then go to space as well. It feels like a delineating line in the art style of the game as well. And you do get a little bit of story here as you move into Mission 7. But honestly, if you're looking for a deep story, Virtual On is not going to have it for you. It is all about the gameplay. And the best part is if you are using the Supermodel emulator, you can just bring whatever dual analog stick that works on Windows to the party and you're going to be able to set it up as analog twin sticks. Left analog stick, right analog stick function independently. If you want to play it on the Dreamcast, you're going to have a hell of a time if you use the standard Dreamcast controller. Now there is a twin stick controller for the Dreamcast, but use it is not cheap. So if you have a Windows PC with any sort of decent specs and you want to play this game, I can't recommend enough that you use the Model 3 version under Supermodel emulation than you do play on Dreamcast. The graphics are better, you get 16x9 support, upscaling, and the ability to use a standard controller in a very easy manner manner, but you can do so many weird things like use flight sticks and get those into X input. Options are basically limitless on how you want to play Virtual On. As you go into the next match here in space, I love how the colors shift. Everything gets a little bit more steel colored, those blues, those dark grays, and it really does sell the illusion that we have left the colorful Earth and gone further into space. And I like that they just have that transition between the two environments. You will see here, sometimes things in the environments do move. You can use that box to block your opponent, and you can move along with it to try to make sure you get an opening. Sometimes it works, sometimes you miss your melee, dash into your opponent and get absolutely blasted in the face and destroyed. It is all about that risk versus reward, and like I said earlier, there's multiple mechs you can pick, and some seem to be better or worse against different opponents. But on normal difficulty, seeing the end of Virtual On on Model 3 is not an easy task. This game requires a lot of you, a lot of spatial awareness, a lot of input awareness, and just a lot of planning and risk management for you to get really good at it. But that's what I love about it so much. It's a quick pick up and play game that has a lot of depth that you don't expect, especially when you get into the aerial combat and lock on mechanics. Trying to shoot your opponent from the air, them trying to shoot you from the air, strafing around to avoid those locks, it becomes an entire thing and when you get good at it, it's an absolute blast. You'll see there I almost lost that match, but I was able to get that one last melee attack in, stagger my opponent, and that gives me the victory. And The victory feels the same when you're playing a fighting game and you finally squeak out that win when you have basically no health bar left, you get a good combo in, and you turn the tide of the battle. But Virtual On or Torio Tangrant is an absolutely spectacular game. It's one of my favorite Model 3 games of all time, and I also think it's one of the prettiest Model 3 games. Go leave me a comment down below and tell me what your favorite Model 3 game is, and tell me if you've ever played a Virtual On game. I'd be curious to know who has played and who just knows about it. But short of that, I'll be back next week with another episode at Model Museum. I'll have videos throughout the week as well. 
But trust me, if you've never played this game, check it out. Bye-bye.